Hello, if you're afraid of big bugs or fierce predators, you'll be glad to know that none of these species will show up in your yard. Since the last ice age ended 11,700 years ago, many amazing animals have gone extinct. These include mastodons, huge ground sloths, saber-toothed cats, and even dire wolves, which were real and not just a scary story from Game of Thrones. But this doesn't mean that prehistoric animals can't still be around today. There are still many animal species that have been around since before history was written down. Some of them are still the same as when our ancestors wore loincloths and roamed the earth. Several animals can only be found in zoos and protected parks because their numbers are dropping or already endangered. These animals from the past will amaze you every time you see them. Here are 20 terrifying prehistoric creatures that actually existed. Number 20. Helicoprion About 290 to 250 million years ago, the buzzsaw shark, Helicoprion, was a common sight in the oceans. It was mostly known for its weird spiral set of teeth, but it was also a huge sea monster that could grow more than 12 meters long and was the largest sea creature of its time. During the Rocky Mountain 63rd Annual and Cordilleran 107th Annual Joint Meeting of 2011, a huge new fossil find was made at the Phosphorier site in Idaho. The fossil was from a well-known Idaho animal called Helicoprion, a strange, huge fish that has since died out. Jesse B. Pruitt, Dr. Leif Tapanilla, and their Division of Earth Sciences colleagues at the Idaho National History Museum at Idaho State University wrote about the find. People have known about this animal for a long time, but the discovery shows something very interesting. Helicoprion had a circle of teeth that fit in the front of its jaws. Some of these circles were very large. The new tooth whorl was 45 centimeters, 18 inches in diameter, and came from a species of Helicoprion that hasn't been named yet. The specimen was called IMNH-36701 after the Idaho Museum of Natural History where it was kept. Before we begin, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Titanoboa a discovery in the journal Nature says the biggest snake that the world has ever seen was as long as a school bus and as heavy as a small car. It ruled tropical ecosystems only 6 million years after the fearsome Tyrannosaurus rex died out. Titanoboa serogenensis is the name of the giant snake that looks like a boa constrictor. Parts of its skeleton were found in Colombia by a group of scientists worldwide, and they are now at the Florida Museum of Natural History. Jonathan Block, a big vertebrate paleontologist at the Florida Museum, said that the snake was about 42 to 45 feet long based on the size of its fossilized vertebrate. That would make the snake as long as Sue, a T-Rex at the Field Museum in Chicago. Titanoboa, an extinct snake that lived during the Paleocene Epoch 66 million to 56 million years ago, is said to have been the largest known member of the sub-border serpents. A few fossils of Titanoboa have been dated to between 58 and 60 million years ago. Paleontologists have calculated that the average adult Titanoboa was about 13 meters, 42.7 feet long, and weighed about 1,135 kilograms based on its size of the vertebrae, individual pieces of the backbone, that have been found. Titanoboa is related to living anacondas and boas, but it is unclear which of these two constrictor snakes it was more closely related to. Number 18. Tyrannosaurus Rex The Tyrannosaurus Rex was one of the most dangerous animals that ever lived. This famous carnivore ruled the forested river valleys in western North America 68 million years ago. It had a huge body, sharp teeth, and jaws that were so strong they could crush a car. Tyrannosaurus Rex was made to rule. From its nose to the end of its strong tail, the dinosaur's body was as long as 40 feet, or about the size of a school bus. T-Rex walked on two strong legs and could weigh up to eight tons. It walked headfirst across its territory. These dinosaurs likely ate both living animals and dead ones, and sometimes they even ate each other. The head of a T-Rex was the kind of thing that gives you bad dreams. This fierce carnivore was built to crush its food. It had a stiff skull that let it put all the power of its muscles into one bite, putting up to six tons of pressure on its food. 
Even though their thighs were strong, these dinosaurs were not fast. They could only walk up to 12 miles per hour quickly, which is probably not fast enough to chase after a speeding jeep like in the movie Jurassic Park. Scientists have used biomedical models to figure out that if these big animals moved any faster, they would have broken the bones in their feet. Number 17. Sarcosuchus, the dinosaur-killing crocodile. Sarcosuchus was a big relative of crocodiles. It is thought that fully grown individuals could have been as long as 9 to 9.5 meters, 29 to 31 feet, and as heavy as 3.5 to 4.5 tons. It had eyes that were a little bit squished together and a long snout that made up 75% of the length of its skull. Each side of the upper jaw had 35 teeth, while each side of the lower jaw had 31 teeth. The upper jaw was also noticeably longer than the lower jaw, so there was a space between them when the jaws were closed. This is called an overbite. When they were young, the snouts looked like those of living gharials, but they were much wider when they were fully grown. It was much larger than the current saltwater crocodile, which grows up to 7.01 meters and weighs up to 2,000 kilograms. Between 1966 and 1970, the first bones were discovered in the Sahara Desert during multiple expeditions headed by French paleontologist Albert Félix de la Parent. Here, skull fragments, vertebrae, teeth, and scutes were discovered. The French CEA discovered virtually a complete cranium in Niger in 1964. Most of its anatomy wasn't known until 1997 and 2012, when an expedition led by American paleontologist Sereno et al discovered six more specimens, including one with roughly half of the skeleton and most of the spine. Number 16. Megalodon. Megalodon was an extinct megatooth shark, Otodontidae. It is thought to have been the world's largest shark and fish. From the beginning of the Miocene Epoch, 23.03 million years ago, through the conclusion of the Pliocene Epoch, Megalodon bones have been discovered. 2.58 million years ago. Megalodon comes from two Greek words that indicate big teeth. Megalodon fossils have been discovered around every continent's coast and continental shelf areas except Antarctica. In shallow tropical and temperate seas, large seaways divided North America from South America and Europe and Asia from Africa and the Middle East during the early and middle Miocene epoch which spanned from 23 million to 5.3 million years ago. It was probably easier for people to move from one ocean basin to the next due to this. Megalodons migrated to the waters off the shores of Northern Europe, South America, Southern Africa, New Zealand, and East Asia during the Miocene, from small pockets in the Caribbean and Mediterranean seas, the Bay of Bengal, and along the coast of California and Southern Australia. The Megalodon's range declined dramatically during the Pliocene period, and by the end of the epoch, it was extinct. Number 15. Dunkleosteus. Dunkleosteus was a big placoderm, an arthropod fish that lived around 380 to 360 million years ago, in the late Devonian epoch. It was the biggest predator of its time and one of the biggest predators of the Paleozoic era. It stood 10 meters tall, 33 feet. Dunkleosteus is an armored fish from the family Placodermi. It was an arthrodire, one of the more intelligent placoderm fish. Dunkleosteus was probably the biggest placoderm and the biggest animal at the time. He would stay the biggest animal until the dinosaurs came along. The Placodermi first appeared in the Silurian period and were gone by the end of the Devonian. There are no more living relatives. Dunkleosteus had one of the strongest bites of any fish. Its bite was much stronger than any shark, even the great white. Dunkleosteus could focus up to 3,628 kilograms of force per square inch at the tip of its mouth. This puts it in the same group as the Tyrannosaurus rex and modern crocodiles as the animal with the strongest bite. Dunkleosteus could also open its lips in a fraction of a second, creating a strong suction that pulled food into its mouth. This is a way to catch food that many of the most advanced Teleos fishes still use today. Number 14. Mega Piranha. Mega Piranha paranensis is a cerasolmid cherisin fish that lived in Argentina during the late Miocene, 8 to 10 million years ago. It was first described in 2009. It might have been up to 1 meter long. The only parts of the holotype known are the premaxillae. 
and a row of teeth shaped like a zigzag. The rest of its body is unknown. The set looks like both Pacus double row teeth and modern piranhas single row teeth. This suggests that M. paranensis is an intermediate form. It was a bigger version of the piranha. Only Megapiranha's teeth from the premaxilla, the frontest part of the upper jaw, have been found. But comparing these teeth to those of the other piranha species has shown that, if it had the same body type and not just a bigger mouth, it could have been up to one meter long, making it much bigger than piranhas today. When they were found in 1900, these teeth were sharp and in a single zigzag line across the front jaw. They were rediscovered in the 1980s, but it wasn't until 2009 that they were fully documented and given a name. So we can't say if Mega Piranha was a big carnivore or a calm herbivore. To make matters worse, the river systems of South America may have been able to support either way of life. Number 13. Andrew Sarkis Andrew Sarkis was a large, meat-eating creature originally considered a Masonichid, but is no longer. Walking with Beast's second episode included it. It stood about a ton and was as tall as a horse. Andrew Sarkis was a scavenger who ate meat. Despite their appearance, they were not related to current scavengers like wolves, dogs, or even hyenas. They possessed hooves instead of claws on their feet, which was unusual, because they were linked to both ungulates, mammals with hooves, and cetaceans. Their closest living cousins are animals with hooves, such as sheep and goats, whales and dolphins. They resemble sheep clothed as wolves in certain ways. In the 1920s, Roy Chapman Andrews discovered it in Mongolia. Andrew Sarkis, which means Andrew's beast, was the name he gave it. Andrew Sarkis thrived in Mongolia during the late Eocene period, 40 and 35 million years ago. Andrew Sarkis was the world's largest meat-eating terrestrial animal. It was approximately five and a half meters long, two meters tall, and weighed one ton. Andrew Sarkis is only known from a single skull, making it difficult to determine if it was a hunter or a large scavenger when it existed. It could have been the world's largest land-dwelling carnivore. Its primary competition for this honor is the South American short-faced bear, Arctotherium, which is reported to have weighed up to 1,700 kilograms. Number 12. Leo Pluridon. Leo Pluridon was the most dangerous predator ever to live in water. It would have moved through the shallow water of the late Jurassic on its 25 meter long flippers. Leo Pluridon was a hunter. Its long jaws and rows of needle sharp teeth would have made it easy to attack marine crocodiles. Leo Pluridon can smell underwater because of its nose. This made it possible for Leo Pluridon to find its prey from a long way away. Leo Pluridon lived its whole life at sea, even though it needed oxygen to live. It could not get out of the water, so it would have had babies while it was still alive and might have done so in a shallower water. The skull of L. Forex is the biggest one we know about. Its length is 7 meters, but the biggest ones are slightly longer than 10 meters. Tarlow thought in 1960 that it came from an animal about 25 meters, 80 feet long. Later research, No Way 2004, cast doubt on the model used to estimate Leo Pluridon's length. Based on the famous and similar in shape, Chronosaurus skeleton on display at Harvard's Museum of Comparative Zoology, which had a head to body length ratio of 5 meters. Number 11. Tanistrophius, the long necked Triassic. When Tanistrophius was discovered in the 1800s, it was once assumed to be a flying reptile, a pterosaur. Its neck was larger than that of Myanmar's Cayenne Giraffe Woman. This half-water reptile was discovered in Europe, the Middle East, and China. The length of its neck was double that of the rest of its body. It measured as much as 20 feet from head to tail and lived 240 million years ago during the Triassic period. Paleontologists believe that Tanistrophius ate fish based on the morphology of its teeth and the presence of fish scales and squid hooks near its stomach in fossils. It didn't swim well since its back legs were longer and stronger than its front ones. It could have hung out near the coast and moved along the water's edge, shocking its prey by quickly moving its long neck up and down. Tanistrophius has a crocodile-like head and a very, very long neck. Nobody knows what caused this lizard to grow so large. It was difficult to decide whether it preferred being underwater or strolling around on land because no one could tell. 
One of the major things that makes it so unusual is the shape of its neck bones. A Tanistrophius fossil's neck vertebrae are not like those of a snake or lizard. They're instead extended out like a giraffe's. People initially mistook its bones for the long wing bones of a flying pterosaur when they were discovered in 1852. Number 10. Arctidus Even though Arctidus is not a very well-known word, this ursine has been called short-faced bear many times in the popular press. Arctidus is related to Arctotherium, a bear in South America that looks a lot like Arctidus. With its large size and powerful jaws, it's easy to think of Arctidus as a top predator that could kill anything. On the other hand, real science is based on a thorough look at the available fossils, not on assumptions made after a quick look. It was found that Arctidus ate a lot of different kinds of animals and didn't just eat one kind. This is unusual for a predator, but common for a scavenger. The skeleton also shows that Arctidus could have moved around and hunt, especially with his long arms and legs. These could be giving Arctidus a long reach advantage and letting it swipe at its prey. But Arctidus would have to get close enough to do that first. Arctidus is thought to have a top speed of about 50 kilometers per hour, thanks to its long legs and wide strides. This would have been fast enough to keep up with most of its prey. Number 9. Terror Birds Forest racids, sometimes known as horror birds, were a massive, flightless, carnivorous group of extinct South American apex predators during the Cenozoic period, which spanned from 62 to 1.8 million years ago. They stood between 1 and 3 meters tall, 3.3 to 9.8 feet. Today, its nearest living relatives are estimated to be the 80 centimeter tall Ceramos. Titanus walleri, one of the larger species, can be found in Texas and Florida in North America. This indicates that the forest racids are not only the major South American predators known to have traveled north after the Isthmus of Panama land bridge was established during the Great American Interchange. The main pulse of the interchange began about 2.6 million years ago. Titanus at 5 million was an early northward immigrant. T. Walleri was thought to have died out in North America about when humans arrived but further dating of Titanus fossils revealed that they did not live after 1.8 million. Nonetheless, discoveries of small forms dating from 450,000 to 17,000 years ago in Uruguay imply that some forest racids lived there as recently as the late Pleistocene, but this assertion is debatable. Number 8. Pelagornis sandersi, the world's largest flying bird. Pelagornis sandersi is an extinct flying bird whose fossil remains date from the Chadian period of the Oligocene 25 million years ago. The only specimen of P. sandersi has a wingspan of between 6.1 and 7.4 meters, 20 and 24 feet, making it the largest flying bird ever discovered up to 3.7 meters, 12 feet, and twice that of the wandering albatross, which has the longest wingspan of any extant bird up to 3.7 meters. It replaces the previously held record held by the now extinct Argentavis magnificens. P. sandersi has a skeletal wingspan of 5.2 meters, 17 feet, while A. magnificens has a skeletal wingspan of 4 meters, 13 feet. Some scientists were surprised that this species could fly at all, given that it weighs between 22 and 40 kilograms. 48 and 88 pounds, and would be regarded as excessively heavy by the mainstream theory of bird flight. It belongs to a new species of bird, and it can fly in part due to its small body and long wings and the fact that it spent much of its time over the ocean, like the albatross. Number 7. Meganeura, the largest insect ever existed. Meganeura had a small life cycle to modern dragonflies, except its reproductive organs were in its tail instead of its head. It's thought that the organs were put there to keep male dragonflies from being eaten after mating. The male would put the female in a trance-like state before mating with her and then fly away before the female could kill the male. Meganeura is a group of insects that lived in the late Carboniferous about 300 million years ago. They looked like dragonflies and damselflies, and were related to them. Ammonyi is one of the best known species of flying insects. Its wingspan can be anywhere from 65 centimeters, 25.6 inches, to over 70 centimeters, 27.6 inches. 
Meganura was an insect predator that mostly ate other bugs. Meganura is in the family Meganuridae, which includes other large insects that look like dragonflies and date from the late Carboniferous to the middle Permian. Meganura fossils were found for the first time in 1880 near Commentary. France and the late Carboniferous coal measures. In 1885, the French naturalist Charles Brognard named the fossil Meganura, which means large nerved, after the network of veins on the insect's wings. In 1979, a very good fossil example was found in Derbyshire. The holotype is kept at the Natural History Museum in Paris. Even though Meganura is known as the big dragonfly, its fossils are not as well preserved as other Meganurids. Number 6. Megatherium, giant ground sloth. The scientific name for a type of ground sloth that is no longer alive is Megatherium americanum. The name means big American beast. Manuel Torres found the first M. americanum fossils in Argentina in 1787. They were sent to the Museo Nacional de Ciencias in Madrid, where the original skeleton can be seen. Sloths that live today are small mammals. They are less than a meter long, weigh about 5 kilograms on average, and hang from tree branches most of the time. They can only be found in South and Central America right now. Sloths are known for having little energy and moving slowly and steadily, hence their name. They are part of a larger group called the Xenarthra, which includes armadillos and anteaters, which are distant relatives. Most extinct sloths lived on the ground, unlike modern tree sloths, and some of them were a lot bigger than tree sloths. Megatherium americanum could grow 10 times as big as a living sloth and weigh up to 4 tons, similar to a present-day bull elephant. M. americanum would have been 3.5 meters 12 feet tall if it stood on its back legs. We know that they live simultaneously as humans because fossils of megatherium have been found with cuts on them, which means that these giant sloths were probably eaten by people thousands of years ago. Number 5. Prehistoric Millipedes Anthropleura Anthropleura, a huge relative of centipedes and millipedes, flourished in Great Britain and North America during the Carboniferous period. It's the world's largest land invertebrate, and it became so massive because Carboniferous Earth had a lot of oxygen in the air. The Anthropleura's body was made up of 30 armored plates measured around 6 meters long. Two legs supported each plate. Anthropleura would have consumed dead wood and leaves according to Connor Temple. Anthropleura was nearly blind, yet it had enough senses of smell and touch to locate other animals. Connor also claimed that Anthropleura was a shy species, but the Anthropleura he encountered on the London Underground was quite violent and easily provoked into attacking. Claudia Brown joked that the underground Anthropleura might be cruel because it suffers from bipolar disorder. Anthropleura possessed a lethal toxin. It used a long, thin, metallic-looking tube behind its jaws to inject it into its victims, just like an insect. When an Arthropleura bites a large creature like a human, the venom gradually attacks the central nervous system, causing the victim to tremble and shudder violently and scarcely move before losing consciousness. Antivenom might be made from pure Arthropleura venom samples, but without it, anyone poisoned by a bite would have little chance of survival and would die within hours. Even if someone survived an Arthropleura's lethal bite and recovered, they would still suffer short-term memory problems. Number 4. Leviathan, the giant prehistoric whale. Leviathan lived up to its biblical name. It was the world's largest prehistoric whale and weighed as much as the huge shark Megalodon. Paleontologists say that the Leviathan was over 50 feet long and weighed 50 tons based on its 10 foot long brain. It was about the size as a modern sperm whale. This made the Leviathan the biggest predatory whale during the Miocene period, about 13 million years ago. It would have stayed at the top of the food chain if prehistoric shark Megalodon hadn't been even bigger. We don't know how long Leviathan ruled the seas because we don't have enough fossils. But it's a safe bet that this huge whale sometimes ran into the even bigger Megalodon. Even though it's unlikely that these two top predators would have gone after each other on purpose, they may have run into each other while looking for food. As discussed, in Megalodon vs Leviathan, who wins? The Leviathan, or Liviatan milvili, was a prehistoric whale that lived about 13 million years ago during the Miocene period. It was found when fossils of Liviatan milivili were found in the coastal desert of Peru in 2008. It was given the name in 2010. Liviatan means Leviathan in Hebrew, and Melvili is a nod to Herman Melville, who wrote Moby Dick. The species died out because it could no longer find food.
Number 3. Anomalocaris Anomalocaris is a flattened animal with an asymmetrical non-mineralized exoskeleton on both sides. It has a segmented trunk with at least 11 gill-equipped swimming flaps on the sides. It also has a massive tail fan consisting of three pairs of fins that protrude from the body. The gut glands of some specimens are linked with the bodily components. The front of the head features one pair of appendages, two eyes on stalks, and a mouth with several spiny plates that appears like a circle. The 14 segments of the frontal appendages are long. Each section is finished with two sharp spikes protruding from the underside. The stalked eyes are located on the back of the head and are quite large. The ventral mouth features 32 rectangular plates arranged in a circle, four large and 28 small. Sharp spines point into a square aperture in the middle of the plates. Although the longest anomalocaris specimen is 25 centimeters long, fragments of the animal reveal that it might have grown to be much larger, possibly up to 100 centimeters. The mouth of the anomalocaris was made up of 32 overlapping plates. According to some scientists, that means it can easily crush victims. They cite bite marks on trilobites as proof of their crushing capabilities. Number 2. Gigantosaurus Gigantosaurus was a theropod dinosaur genus that lived between 99.6 and 97 million years ago in Argentina. The holotype specimen was discovered in Patagonia's Candeleros Formation in 1993 and is over 70% complete. In 1995, the animal was given Gigantosaurus carolini. which means Big Southern Lizard, in Latin, and honors the discoverer Ruben de Carolini. This animal was eventually linked to a dentary bone, a tooth, and some traces discovered before the holotype. The genus drew much attention and was involved in a scientific discussion concerning theropod dinosaur size limits. Gigantosaurus was one of the largest terrestrial carnivores known, but its actual size has been difficult to quantify due to the incompleteness of the remains discovered thus far. The most complete specimen is estimated to be 12 to 13 meters long, 39 to 43 feet, with a skull length of 1.5 to 1.80 meters, 5.0 to 5.9 feet, and a weight of 4.2 to 13.8 tons, 4.6 to 15.2 short tons. A dentary bone from a supposedly larger man was used to calculate a length of 13.2 meters, 43 feet. Some researchers believe the species is larger than Tyrannosaurus, the largest theropod in history. In contrast, others believe they are nearly similar in size and that the largest size estimations for Gigantosaurus are overblown. Number 1. Smilodon, Sabertooth Cat Smilodon is a cat from the Machairodont subfamily, which is now extinct. It is the best known saber toothed cat and one of the most well known prehistoric mammals. Even though it was called a saber toothed tiger, it was not related to tigers or other cats today. During the period of Pleistocene, which lasted from 2.5 million to 10,000 years ago, Smilodon lived in the Americas. The genus was named in 1842 after fossils were found in Brazil. The name of the genus means two edged knife or scalpel plus tooth. The three species that are known right now are S. gracella. S. fatalis and S. populator. It is thought that the last two species are related to S. gracilis, which evolved from Megatherion. Most Smilodon fossils have been found in the La Brea tar pits in Los Angeles, where hundreds of them have been found. Smilodon was the strongest cat that had ever lived. It had the best developed forelimbs and the longest upper canine teeth of any cat that has ever lived. Its jaw was wider than that of modern cats, and its top teeth were thin and delicate as if they were made for killing with precision. Around 10,000 years ago, Smilodon died out, just like other large animals in the North and South America. People think that its disappearance was caused by its need for big animals, climate change, and competition with other species, but no one knows for sure. We're lucky that the time of big, scary predators is mostly over. What if you meet one of those things? We'd love to hear your view and know how you feel and what you think in the section below.